Good afternoon. Welcome back from lunch. This is making content part of your company culture. If you're trying for something else, now's the time to get up before it gets really awkward for Taylor. So Taylor Wolden is a content writer, or the, the content writer? The content writer at GiveWP, which is a WordPress product company that makes products that help nonprofits do their thing. So she's making sure that the, she got yelled at earlier.
working with a content team is working by yourself, creating a process and knowing how you want it done, knowing what you're going to publish and how. Um, so first, start with your workflow. Um, pick, pick a timeline. This says 15 days before publishing is planning. We actually plan our content like months in advance and then write it later on. Um, this is not our timeline, this is just an example. But pick a time to plan, know, when you want, know what you want to publish ahead of time, and then write it, and then walk away from it, and then go back and edit it. Um, know when you want supporting graphics done and what you need done, plan that in advance, and then make sure you go back and format it. Check your formatting, make sure it looks good on your site. Um, and I recommend editing one more time after you format too. Because once it's on your site, you actually, you'll see different things. So go back and edit one more time, and then publish. So know when, when in your process you want to do each of those things, that way you never miss a deadline. Also, you're going to save yourself time because you already know what tasks you have to do beforehand. Um, this is my content matrix. So, this is how you're going to basically determine what you're going to publish at all times. On the top is, uh, these are some different examples of voice that you can use. Um, we use, at Gim, we are educational and approachable. And um, with WP Business Reviews, we're more informative and a little bit more casual. So they're different, they're very similar, but they're different. In the actual matrix, matrix itself, you have sales hooks on the left and then avatars on top. Um, some people call those personas. So I like to start with um, the sales hooks. Determine why somebody's gonna use your, your product or service over another. Um, so why would somebody use your plugin that does the exact same thing that another plugin does? Or why would somebody use your um, marketing service when there's hundreds of others out there. What do you have to offer that somebody else doesn't? Um, ones that, one that's not up here is actually keeping up with the Joneses. So if you have really expensive services or products, but they're really cool and awesome, um, you can actually exploit that in your content and talk about how um, somebody can be better than their friend because they have your product. <laughs> Once you have your sales hooks, um, you're actually going to build personas. So. Don't just say, oh, I'm selling to a business owner. Business owners look completely different <coughs> depending on who they are. Um, you might have an ideal customer who's a business owner that's not tech savvy. That's a, that's a key point right there. If he's not tech savvy, he has different interests than the business owner who might be tech savvy. And you're going to talk to them differently. Um, so knowing who you're talking to down on that level is really important. I like to actually create names and people so it's almost like a fake profile, and you're talking to that specific person. Um, once you have all that, you craft key messages. So this is kind of the hard part. It's like, how do you alter what you're saying for the same concept in different ways? Uh, so let's say you're a lawn care company, and you're trying to sell to like a 22-year-old male, and you're also trying to sell to a 35-year-old uh, single mom. The 25-year-old male is going to be um, on the go, he's going to want to hang out with his friends, and he's going to be probably more invested in, in like going out and doing things than he is staying at home and hanging out. The mom's going to want to spend time with her family, she's going to value trust, and she's going to want to make sure she hires somebody of their quality. Um, so you would probably talk to them differently. You would use convenience. If you wanted to use convenience for both of them, you could, but you would say to the 25-year-old male, hey, spend time, more time with your friends and let us take care of your mom. For the 35-year-old mom, you're not going to say that. You're going to say, hey, spend time more time with your family. Go do something fun. Let us take care of your mom. Um, so just the way that you say that is different, but it's the same concept. You're, you're talking about convenience. Um, once you decide all of the backgrounds, you're going to also build a template. So we have a template that looks, this is exactly what's on our template. Um, and I fill this out every single time, and whether or not I'm writing the post or somebody else's, they have this in front of them to know where they're going with it and why they're doing it. It's important to have um, three things on here are really important. Your offer and value is probably the most important. That's why you're writing this. Why are you writing this piece? What's the point? Um, your target audience is important. Pick that persona. Which one are you talking to? And talk to them specifically. And then the keyword. The keyword is important, but it's important to remember not to stuff it and not to overthink it. Pick a keyword, keep it in mind, use it, but do not force it. 
Um, the rest of them, they're important. They just kind of help us organize. But if you create something like this, every time you sit down to write a post, you're gonna save yourself time because you're not coming up with the same stuff over and over. You already have it in front of you and you're making selections based on what you've already done research on. Lastly, on this session is organizing all of that. So you have all of, all of these things, they're everywhere. Um, keep them in a folder. And then you have to organize your calendar. Um, the free way to do that is to use Google Drive and use Calendar and Excel spreadsheets and Google Docs and everything. Um, we, we used to do this and when you have more than one brand, it's actually almost impossible to keep up with. So I recommend CoSchedule because it integrates with WordPress um, and you can schedule out your social media posts and it functions as a full project management system basically for content writing. Um, you can assign tasks. Um, plan out content, you can even plan marketing campaigns, but it's a little bit more pricey. Um, so I, no matter what, make sure you're organizing it. If you're using an Excel spreadsheet, great, do that, but just make sure you stay on top of it. Um, if your calendar looks like mine, you need to co-schedule. And that's actually, that's pretty light compared to normal. <coughs> So you did all the heavy lifting. You know what you want, or if your content writer knows what you want to publish, how you want to publish it. You've got a workflow down. You know how you're going to work. Maybe you've written a couple posts yourself. Um, now you need to get your team involved because you're not the expert on every single subject that you want to write on. You're somebody on your team might be. Um, I actually used to, when I worked for a comic supply store, I used to sit down at the counter and wait for the cashier who was the only person who knew anything about our products to be free and in between his customers I would sit there and say like listen to what he's saying and ask him about something that he just told them about or a new product and get all of the information and go write a post on it and then bring it back to him and have him edit it and tell me what was wrong with it or what verbiage sounded dumb because I'm not a plumber and writing that sounded weird. Um, and so that right there is why I emphasize working with the team because if he had written, written that himself and then I edited it we would have put out so much time. <laughs> so, everybody does need a leader. Just because it's a team effort doesn't mean that somebody's not in charge. Somebody does need to organize your calendar. Somebody does need to figure out what topics you're writing about, how you're writing about them, and how they're going to be distributed. And then, of course, publishing, posting, and distributing. Somebody needs to do that. Um, they really can't do it all. <laughs> like I said, um, when I was working at that plumbing supply store, I was running, literally running back and forth between offices pretty far because it was a really big warehouse um, and it wasted a lot of time. So this is our team. Um, I use my team's strengths. So Ben writes uh, tutorials and videos because he's on our support team. So he knows the plugin inside and out. He knows how to do all of the things that I might want to teach somebody to do and he has all the tools to do it and create the screenshots. <coughs> so he does that. I edit it. Um, and then Michelle is our head of customer success. So she knows a lot about fundraising and nonprofits, and she talks to them on a daily basis. So she knows what they're thinking about, and um, she comes up with a lot of great blog ideas for nonprofits. Um, she also comes up with outside the box uses for Give because she uses it so much that she'll be like, hey, this is a great way to use it, and she'll write a post on that. Um, Amanda knows a lot about SEO and marketing. So I, um, she has helped a lot with our WP Business Reviews blog, and she's written a lot of content there. But she also wrote um, an SEO guide for nonprofits. Um, while I probably could have written that, Amanda knows a lot more technical things than I do, and using her strengths there was perfect. Kevin, Kevin knows a lot about development. He actually knows a lot about everything. Um, but he writes all of our, not all of them, he writes a lot of development-based blogs, stuff about Gutenberg and WordPress. Um, kind of similar to the content that Matt writes. Matt writes community and product, he's head of, um, he's head of support and he's also um, head of community outreach. So he writes a lot of things about WordPress, our product, um, some more tutorials, and things like that. So my job is to take all of these people and herd them. I get to herd the cats. Um, because it's not part of their daily job or their normal job to just write a blog. So I might have to poke them six times to even get them to start writing. It's like, hey, did you write this yet? Did you write it? No? Okay. Can you write it though? Let's do. Got her cats. Um, 
And because of that, nothing's going to stay on the same timeline that you established in the beginning. So go back and figure it out. What works with your team? Your ideal timeline is not going to be your timeline. Especially if you work in development. Remember that. Um, okay, so then to keep your team invested, report back to them. Nobody's going to care if they're giving you stuff and they never hear back about it. They don't know if anybody cares about it. They want to hear what their content did. Did they write a great post that somebody commented on and said something awesome or that was shared on social media and really helped somebody? Let them know. Um, use numbers. Put a chart in front of them. Show them what the content is doing so that they're still invested because Weeks go by, people forget, you know, keep them invested, report regularly. Use all of the data. So website analytics, you're going to look at news, your time on the page, your bounce rate and your exit rate. Um, your time on the page is really key for content because you want to know if they're actually reading it. If they're not and you have like two seconds on the page, you have like a thousand views, then there's really no point because they're not staying on the page, they're leaving. Social media, you want to know about engagement, link clicks, shares, and reach. It depends on your goal, which of these is uh, more beneficial or more important for your company. But for when you're reporting to your team, they want to know how much their post was shared or how many people liked it because that makes them feel good. And then email statistics. Let them know how the email did. When you send it out to subscribers, that's part of your stats too. So let them know how many people clicked on their link, how many people liked it, and how it's doing on social media. So fast, you guys. I'm sorry. So, my whole point is teamwork is the key to a successful content strategy. Um, really, you can't. You can. You can try to publish it all yourself. You can write it all yourself. You can do it all yourself. But the reality is, it's probably not your main job. You're probably doing something else. Um, and in order to actually make it part of your culture, it has to be a team effort. So, and I also recommend hiring a writer. If you're not a writer, hire a writer to help you. At least organize it. Um, if not, Grammarly will be your best friend because it'll tell you when you write something dumb. And I love Grammarly, but it's not always right either, so keep that in mind. Can you go back to the last one? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I went really fast, you guys. Do you have any questions? I'll put it in my last slide in a second. Like I said, the man is my technical SEO expert. 
I know about writing. Um, but putting it in an infographic is great. I know that it, like, people will interact with that more, and I think that um, if you do it in a PDF format and it is readable, like you can re still read the text on there, I think that Google can still read that. Um, but most likely you're going to have an image. So that'll just have people stay on your page longer, which will help with Google because they read that. What is the best uh, social media site to put your content? Twitter, Facebook, on your website, some people don't use your website, but they use your Twitter site. So where do you find the content that's most effective? Everywhere. Yeah, same we, thing, same not necessarily alter it, but the same content, just alter your message. So um, people on Facebook like stories, they like things they can interact with and share with their friends. People on Twitter want something quick that they can comment on, click on, and scroll past. Um, LinkedIn is great for business stuff because people do actually read articles on there. Um, other than that, always have it on your site because you want to own your content, for sure. Originate your content on your site. And then post it elsewhere. Sorry for first. Okay, um, so what are your strategies around getting with your teammates to, to um, give you new content that they <coughs> You're never not going to feel like that, just so you know. <laughs> you're never not going to feel like you're annoying. Um, but I like using Slack, um, tell them to set themselves a reminder. And then um, we also, with CoSchedule, if you have um, a team plan, or I think it's like a, a growth plan, is when you can start having more than one user. And um, you can assign people tasks and they have due dates and things like that. So it'll remind them in their email. So if you don't want to be on a project manager platform, but I just buzz them. Exactly as we would want people coming in is how often we would post for each one. Um, 